The Fargo Antiques and Repurposed Market is happening this weekend. And we have Christy Bixby here joining us to give us kind of a preview of what people will find. Thank you for coming in today. Thank you for having me. Uh, so first, let's start with what you brought today. There's some treasures on the table. <laughs> I brought a couple of goodies. Um, this right here is just some wood carved. They're called folk art. They're pretty popular. Um, and, and this little couple here runs about $75. I don't know anything about it, who made them. We just call it folk art. But these guys here are a big deal. These are called Oli the Hermit. The small ones in yep. front here. And these are stamped at the bottom. They do say Oli the Hermit. They look an awful lot like the other couple. Yeah, they do. But these were made by a gentleman um, that is a native of Valley City. He was born in 1882. Um, he farmed south of Valley City. And when he retired from farming and moved to Valley City, he started wood carving and his little carvings are very popular and highly collectible. He died in 1966 and his stuff is very hard to find. This is, and you're saying these have the little, the things put right on the bottom of them here. Yep. Is that? It says Oli the Hermit right at the bottom. And there was a little sure book does. that you can get all about his life. He's a pretty interesting guy. These are a lot lighter weight than I thought they were. I mean, you can, can tell they're... Yeah, I kind of yep. feel like they're, you know... I yeah, I got be. nervous. I got, like, shaking. There might be... There might be... There there might like, be a, well, their mice <laughs> are kind of heavy. But, <laughs> and normally, they don't come that small. They're, normally, they're, you know, not maybe that, that big either. But these ones are pretty rare to be so that, that small. So that's very detailed carving, then, is yes. what had to go Any idea that. how many were made? Did you say... You know, I don't know how many were made. I don't know if anybody really knows how many oh. they were made, but the book is pretty good. Um, the book, I can't remember even where we got the book, but um, this little set here would sell for about $200. $200, okay. Quite the treasure. I like that. Okay. And these little goodies here, um, toys are always very um, sought after when people come into the store, and these were made all during World War II. Um, I brought two different tractors for you to look at. Um, this this one was made kind of just before World War II. This one was made during, um, and because metal was so hard to get and so sought after for you know making ships and weapons and whatnot, this was made out of a hard plastic. Yeah, and this one you is can metal. Feel it. Wow, this is some. And what does it say? What brand of uh, tractor these were made as here? I mean, oh, I know Case uh, is red currently, but I don't know if that's currently what it is. But I think the other. Um, the other we one, just does have it this international. It does. It says yep. international diesel, but so you can yep. see the total difference in weight and um, material that they used. And, and this so was just kind of another cool piece that I just decided to bring in because the Marks Company they they made most of these and they were really detailed for their time. And Popeye here, he was made, we believe, pre-war, and we can tell by this stamp. Um, he runs, he's very expensive. He is about $400. Really? Yeah. So, but talk a little bit about the quality, because these are in good shape. They you don't are. always find pieces that are, you know, all the pieces are there. And You would be very surprised uh, what people bring in to us that they would like to sell out of. These particular pieces came from a personal collection um, from one of my, my vendors. Um, they just don't make toys like this nowadays. And if they were well taken care of, um, they do come in pretty good shape. You can tell this one was played with, but yet taken care of. Um, sometimes they come in and the wheel is missing and the steering wheel is gone. Well, yeah, because back when they bought it, it wasn't an antique. It was just right. a fun toy. Right, it was just a fun toy. Yeah. yeah, and they would get rusty and whatever. Nowadays, you know, toys are made so different. And mm -hmm. they, they, you couldn't sell these. <laughs> it's kind of a dangerous piece. Um, so let's talk specifically about the market. What are the hours, the location? Uh, what should people know if they want to go check out some of this stuff? Well, we've been there for four years. Um, it'll be our four-year anniversary coming up. Um, it is our fourth you know, fourth time doing this. So it's kind of fun. Um, we have several vendors set up outside. It's usually just our internal vendors. They get a chance to set up outside and have a big flea market. Have over, I think, 28 spots set up outside. We have um, Texas Best Express coming, the food truck. Um, Whitney does a great job. She's kind of known for her crunchy dog. And um, then everything inside the store is on sale. Every, and there's over 64 vendors inside. So it's great time to come out and get a good bargain. And what day and what are the hours again? It is on this Saturday from 10, we're our regular hours, 10 to 7. 
and on Sunday noon to six. The Fargo and Antiques and Repurposed Market. Just off of 52nd, right? Right in the middle of that road <laughs> construction, yes. Um, but we um, Google Maps, if you have that, it, it takes you right to us. And we will have some signs put out too to help people I get to it. us. You, does the show pickers have people more excited too? <laughs> like I, I'm excited about this. What would those guys think about some of these finds? Oh, they would love this, they stuff. Would love this yeah, stuff. Yeah, absolutely. All right, thank you so much. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. We'll be right back.